Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. In the last episode, we started on the journey of all the stuff I've learned about article writing, and we tackled three things. But in the first episode, we just tackled this concept of coaches and editors. And, you know, the thing is that there are lots of people online and offline that call themselves coaches. But how do you define a coach? You define a coach by looking at their ability to give you a skill. And real coaches don't look at just how to, but they look at how not to. So what they do is they put you in a situation that you have to get out of and you learn from that because we learn from our mistakes. And coaches, real good coaches, that's what they do. They put you in that situation and then you clamber out and that's how you learn. The second part of this was editors. And once you write something, once you put it out, you don't have a perspective on it like the outside world does. So it's really good for you to get both a coach and an editor. And that was part one, but what about part two? Well, part two, we look at how you need to get out of your own way. One of the things that we do when we sit down to write is we think, let's write an article. And that is the slowest way to write an article. And that's the first thing that we'll tackle today. The slowest way to write an article. Sit down and write an article. What should you be doing instead? Let's get to the second part of this podcast and look at why writing for yourself is a tedious process and why it needs to be avoided. I suffer really quite badly from nerves on many occasions. I did as a child before examinations. They are gone the moment I step onto the podium or I step onto the pit because then your nerves are a reflection that you're focused on yourself and how you will be perceived. Whereas once your focus is firmly and solely on the music, there's no place for nerves. But I know how I have to best come around it. I have a performance routine, eating at a certain time, resting at a certain time, certain foods that I don't eat on the days of performances and so on. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think without a certain heightened adrenaline level, we can't reach that extra something that makes a performance much more special than even the dress rehearsal. I couldn't agree more. Focusing on the music is the only way out of the nerves of what my teacher, Kenneth Kieser, who's a very smart man, calls the cocktail party in the head, which is this <laughs> cocktail party that, uh, you know, goes on in your mind. And, and the main focus of all the people in the cocktail party is to say how terrible you are in every possible sense and to criticize you to death. You're not well prepared. You don't know this. You don't know. Da, 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 da. When that's going on, which I'm sure everyone's lived that cocktail party in the head one day or another but when you're in front of a group of people as we are rehearsing and and conducting this can be turned on and it can be so loud that there's no space for the music to be heard inside you inside your mind and so I've worked hard through my development to stop that cocktail party in the head and you just focus on the music focus on the phrase and how exciting it is to shape it the way you decided to shape it or to get to the next sentence that you're going to explain press and so on. We have to have this very fine balance between being confident and humble. Absolutely. And I think that's the key. And sometimes with humi- when humility is overtaking you, then it becomes nervousness and insecurity. Mm-hmm. And then when confidence takes over, you can become arrogant. What you just heard were the voices of Simon Young, who is a conductor from Australia, 
and Alondra de la Parra, who is a superstar conductor from Mexico. What they're describing is a concept of what I'd call writing for yourself, or rather writing for myself. When I write an article, my first act is to ask a client for a question. If they ask more than one question, I'm a lot happier. And if they have a list, I'm the happiest. Because now I can stop this silly cocktail party in my brain. This cocktail party pops up every single time, no matter how good you get at the craft of article writing. Most times, I'm just writing an article, but sometimes that article becomes a book. Like the time I wrote the book on dartboard pricing, for instance. I couldn't figure out whether it was good enough. I couldn't understand why anyone would buy the book when I'd written so many articles and done so many podcasts on the topic. Of course, I knew. I knew that it's an entirely different experience reading a structured book versus random articles. But even so, you think about the cocktail party a lot. You don't know this. You don't know. Da, 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 da. I had no such trouble when coming up with answers for a future book on the three-prong system. A client and a friend of mine, Paul Wolf, he decided to do a series of three interviews with me on the topic of how I take breaks, how I manage to take a three-month vacation, how we handle vocation and vacation. And Wolf had a series of questions, some prepared in advance and some that organically sprouted from the discussion in progress. It's not like I haven't tried to write the book before. I've created an outline, started on the project, and then abandoned it repeatedly. And it's not because of a lack of skill either. I can easily write the book, possibly in under a week. The problem is that I have to go into my brain to write that book. When Wolf asks me the questions, I'm not trying to think about me. I'm trying to think about the person asking the question. And occasionally I'm thinking of other clients too. The problem is that I would have to get into my own brain to write that book. And so all of those answers that come out, well, they're organic, they're simple, they're stuff that I'm thinking, what would Paul do? What would someone else do? The cocktail party syndrome disappears. It's replaced by a focus on the audience. To write quickly and to write a lot, I need questions. I need a lot of questions. But where do we get these questions? I get most of my questions in 5000BC.com. So clients get in there to the forum and they ask a bunch of questions. And then I write answers to them. I also get a lot of questions through the podcast, through email, through consulting. I don't do a lot of consulting, but every time I do, it's just amazing. So questions come from chats after I make a presentation and just through listening and reading. What I've learned is I can't look for a random person asking a question online. That doesn't work for me at all. Instead, I have to have a specific person asking me a specific question. And when I'm writing the answer, I'm thinking of that person. This is what gets me to take a walk in that person's shoes and to write with more fluidity than if I sat down with a blank screen staring back at me. We all wonder, hasn't this question been answered before? Aren't there 50,003 variations of this question already on the internet? And the answer is no. No one is going to answer the question like you do. For instance, there are whole books on the topic of focus. But my angle on focus and focus in a distracted world, that's different. So I take three months off every year. We still meet our fixed revenue goals. We still manage to write books, conduct courses, do workshops, paint, cook. In short, we can do whatever we want despite the distractions. So the angle is always going to be unique. My voice is always going to be unique and yours will be too. Your voice, your tone, your language, even the structure of your answer will be different. The question may have been asked a million times before, but the answer, your answer, 
it's different. And the orchestra in your brain begins to play. You may not be a great writer yet, you may struggle as I did, but even in the middle of that struggle you'll notice the emotion. You'll realize that everyone has gone home from the cocktail party, but you're not quite alone. Now you've got words on paper. Writing for yourself, it's very difficult. It's disgustingly difficult. It's hard to reach inside your brain and work out how to write an article, how to write a report, how to write a book. But when you write for others, you get that feeling that Young and De La Parra talk about. Suddenly, you're writing for someone else and you feel free. You don't hear that cocktail party in your brain. So a coach, an editor, they help you along. The client and their questions, they bring out the orchestra in your writing. And this takes us to our third part, which is the article itself. The article is also a guide. It's a big guide. So how do you use the article to stay on course? It's a concept called the one idea. And let's find out what this one idea is all about. The stars are out and ready to shine. Everything set for the 20th World Cup final. The ultimate contest in the game. One of the ultimate teams against another that's a lot more reliant on one particular talent. It's D man shaft against the man. Almost half of the goals scored in football or soccer are virtually random. And that's according to Martin Lames of the Technical University of Munich. However, there's a book called Das Reboot. And this is by author Raphael Honigstein. And he says that there is also a non-random side to football. He talks about how a well-prepared team can rise from the depths and win a match in the tournament. And especially, he talks about Germany, which is considered to be a world-class team, but was at the bottom of the football heap in 2000. Germany's randomness came from complacency. In the European Championships in 2000, they failed to win a single game. They even lost to the English team, which was considered pretty terrible in the first place. And yet, 14 years later, Germany would rout Brazil 7-1. Then it would make its way to the ultimate prize, defeating Argentina in the World Cup final. What Germany did, and did effectively, was to reduce the randomness. Right after the 2000 Euro disaster, Germany's top professional clubs were ordered to set up academies, and there was a considerable cost to the clubs. So what they did was actively resist this directive. But 10 years later, this move proved to be a boon. It saved the club millions of dollars in transfer fees because more than half the players in the top division were academy graduates. In short, the moment they got rid of their randomness, the German team started to see results. And a similar concept applies to article writing. When we sit down to write, we often get into the state of randomness. And you know it's random because you can't sum up the article with one word or one idea. The moment you have one idea, that idea becomes a wall around the article. You know exactly what you're going to write about, what the subtopics are under that main topic, and how to get the stories, how to get the case studies to support that piece. For instance, this section is about why the article can't be random. Instead of starting the article with a boring line that says, the worst thing you can do is write a random article, the article starts with a story of disaster. Well, a disaster for German football, anyway. Yet, most writers never sit down and write their one word because they're not sure it's the right word. But there is no right word. The word is what you want to communicate. In the introduction, I wanted to communicate a story about a journey. So that's where the story of Isambard Brunel came to light. 
The second part was about the coach. So we ran into Wolfgang Amadeus's father, Johann Leopold Mozart. The third part was about why writing for yourself is so hard. And then we had Alondra de la Parra and we had Simone Young. They were telling their story. And finally, we have the story of randomness and now we have the German football team. When you have a single word to focus on or a single idea, it's not hard to get stories. But it also forces you to stay within the parameters of that single word. I have to stay within the walls of randomness as part of this article unfolds because I'm talking about randomness right now. So it becomes my binding agent. Ironically, the one word can be picked randomly. The one word in this piece could have been completely different. It could have been about binding. And so the story would be different, the angle would be different. It could have been about boundaries. And yet again, we'd see a different story or a different angle. So you don't have to pick one word that is correct. That one word can be random, but then it forms that binding agent. If you simply sit down to write an article, you're doing what a lot of crummy writers do. Sure, you can pick up the one word or the one idea randomly, but then that becomes your binding agent. It becomes your wall. It becomes your barrier. Now you have focus. The direction of your article is no longer random. You follow the lead of the one word, and your article isn't a mishmash of ideas thrown randomly on paper. You become like the German Football Association, focused and getting results every single time. You throw randomness out of the football stadium. So that brings us to the end of this podcast. Let's summarize what we've learned. What has been my journey in article writing? So yes, article writing is a journey and you can limp into the harbor or you can arrive in great shape. To sail into the harbor in glory, I've learned three things over the years. The first thing is you need a coach. And this can be a course, a book, a workshop, but you need that coach. And that coach needs to be a teacher, not a preacher. Then you need an editor. Everyone needs an editor. I have five or six, but even a single editor can make a world of a difference. The second element is one of writing for yourself. It's a headbanging, frustrating process. The best way out of this mess is to get questions. I get questions from clients in 5000 BC, from emails, from consulting, from almost everywhere. But there are not random questions on the internet. They're from a person, a person I know, and this is what makes all the difference. I don't have a cocktail party in my brain because I'm focused on answering the questions of that client. My entire mood, my mode, my method, it changes when I'm focused on them instead of myself. And finally, we have one word. Without the one word, you're in random land. You have to define what you want to say in a word and then look for examples that fit that word. The only thing that's random is the choice of the one word itself. You can choose any word, you can choose any idea, but once you do, everything in the article must align to that one word or idea. And that's what I've learned. These are the three things I know about article writing. That it's a journey and Isambard Brunel would have been proud to be on this crazy, exhilarating journey. So what's the one thing that you can do for yourself? The one thing that you can do is to make sure that you get a coach. Somehow do a course, read a book, find that coach, find the teacher that you trust and then trust the teacher. So 
So what's happening in Psychotactics land? Well, the article writing course, in 18 minutes, 50% of the course was filled up and in 24 hours, the entire course was done and dusted. Every single seat gone. And you know, I've said this many times on the podcast and in articles online, and it seems like an exaggeration. It seems like, how could this be possible without joint ventures and affiliates and going to a group that's smaller than 400? Because it filled up with just the members from 5000 BC. So it is possible for you to do the same, to replicate this. And it shows you that you don't have to have thousands or tens of thousands of people on your list and you don't have to do what everybody else is doing we work with very small groups as i said just the members of 5000 bc and of course they get first preference so it helps to be part of 5000 bc because your questions are answered in great detail but it also helps in respect to getting in first on a course like the information products course which is coming up or the cartooning course we're also having a workshop in New Zealand on is your landing page effective but really it's New Zealand it's summer and it's going to be warm and it's <laughs> Queenstown it's it's an amazing place to visit you've always wanted to visit New Zealand so go to psychotactics.com slash x 2017. Now, when you go there, you'll only find five lines. And one of the bonuses is that you get to meet Renuka. Five lines. Are you going to sign up on the basis of five lines? Well, a couple of people have already signed up. And why have they signed up? They've signed up because they know a psychotactics course, a workshop is about skill. So you will end up with skill, but you will also end up drinking a lot of wine and having a great time in New Zealand. So go to psychotactics.com slash x2017 we haven't started marketing that a lot yet but it'll soon happen and those seats will fill up as well so go there and check it out and that's it from psychotactics land for now we'll see you next time on the next episode which is about landing pages and how to make those landing pages really effective and we'll follow a graphical method it's pretty cool so stick in there and we'll see you next time bye for now